And Brendan O'Neill, it's great to have you here tonight to bring some perspective to what is obviously a really devastating result. So before we talk about the political angle, tell me, how are you holding up? What did you make of that match? Um, I mean, I loved it, right? I, I really enjoyed it. It was thrilling. It was a great watch. I watched it with friends. But I'm also really devastated. I was, I had so many hopes and expectations on this match. And it was going so well to begin with. And then England started slacking a little bit. And then, of course, there was those nail-biting penalties, which were just soul-crushing. I mean, the one point I would make about Saka in particular, you know, we've seen those images of Saka crying in the arms of Gareth Southgate. I would just say that, you know, he had a wonderful tournament. People in this country love him. And of course, his manager, Gareth Southgate, is someone who was most famous in the past for having missed a penalty. And look at Gareth Southgate now. He is one of the great heroes of this nation. So people like Saka should take comfort from that. They are really widely supported. They did their best. They played extraordinarily well over the past few weeks. I really wish the result had been different, but let's try not to get too down about it. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. But, Brendan, it is interesting, isn't it? Because, as you wrote so brilliantly, there are a whole load of people, particularly on the woke left, who have tried to hijack this tournament for their own political reasons. And, in fact, as you wrote so many times, actually, they go against what football fans are and what football fans are really about. They certainly don't have an understanding of football fans. Absolutely not. And I think that's that's one of the things that's been a bit depressing about the Euro 2020s is the fact that it has been politicised. It has been racialized, And uh, I think we have a we have a situation now where we see two different Englands. We have one England, which is this kind of middle class, woke Guardian reading, Guardian reading England, which thinks that football needs to be a, a way of raising awareness about social issues. The footballers need to be role models. They need to take the knee and re-educate the public about racism and sexism and homophobia and all these other issues. They, they see football as being a tool of social re-education, essentially. And then there's another England, which is a largely working class England. It's the kind of England I saw around Wembley today. I've been around Wembley a lot today. Boisterous and loud and pretty drunken. And these are people who see football as a way of letting off steam, as a way of showing national pride and national solidarity, and as a way of expressing their sense of being part of a collective. In this sense, in, in this case, of course, the collective of England, the England team. So there really are, you know, this idea that we've all been in it together, I just don't buy that at all. What has actually happened off the back of the Euros is that the culture wars have been intensified and lots of people, lots of culture warriors on the regressive left in particular, have used the Euros to try to colonise football and use it as a tool to re-educate ordinary people. So there's a lot of tensions floating under the surface of this tournament and it will be interesting to see what happens next with those tensions. You're completely right. And of course, uh, they simmered down because we did incredibly well. And no one who is a true football fan wants to create a culture war when England is through to the semi-finals or the finals. But Brennan, there has been so much snaring from the liberal elite. Uh, I'll give you the examples of, of the boos, right? So, so aren't England football fans terrible for booing the taking of the knee? Aren't they terrible for booing uh, the, the national anthem of Denmark? Aren't they terrible for for, for for booing the national anthem of Germany. Well, I say no, they're not terrible because that's what England football fans do. It's part of the culture. And it's, and it, and it's the snaring left who aren't football fans and who actually are absolute fair weather supporters who just don't get it. Uh, uh, Dan, I completely and utterly agree. If you don't like booing, if you don't like jeering, if you don't like the pantomime of attacking your opponents and making fun of your opponents, then you should not be fo following football. You should follow another sport like bowls, perhaps, or maybe you know, stick, you know, stick with Wimbledon, which is very polite and lots of yeah, you know, yeah. uh, softly, softly applause. It, it, don't follow football, right? Football is a boisterous, loud often quite drunken pastime. It is followed primarily by working class people, decent working class people, contrary to what is claimed by some of the Guardianistas. And it is a, it's a loud, 
a uh, funny, interesting sport. And this notion that you should never boo the uh, uh, oppo opposing team's national anthem, you should never boo the taking of the knee, all these kinds of ideas that have been pushed by the kind of woke warriors, the woke, uh, the, the correct thinking sections of society, they don't understand what football is all about. They don't understand that football is a way that people let off steam. It's a way that they express their passions and their feelings. And this, you know, the thing that's really irritated me most during this tournament has been the notion that the fans, the English fans who booed the taking of the knee must be racist. That is a complete fallacy. These are the kinds of fans who cheer black players all the time, whether it's Sterling or Saka or whoever else it might be. Their kids probably worship black players. These are the kinds of fans who, you know, football, professional football has 30% black players, which is a higher proportion of black workers than any other industry that I can think of. This is not a racist sport. Most, the vast majority of football fans are not racist. So this idea that booing the taking of the knee is racist is a complete joke. They were booing the taking of the knee because they don't want virtue signaling to invade their sport. They don't want the politics of Black Lives Matter, the kind of progressive politics of Black Lives Matter to invade their sport. And they were making a clear statement about protecting football from that kind of politicization. So I really would defend the fans who booed the taking of the knee. And I would criticize those who want to politicize and racialize football for being the most divisive people in this tournament. Failed mayor Sadiq Khan today trying to politicise the team again, Brendan, actually on the day of the final uh, by posting about the team as 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 uh, being a picture postcard for pro immigration. But the weird suggestion there was somehow that the Conservative Party is anti-immigration, which, of course, is not the case. Uh, the Conservative Party and Pretty Patel, the Home Secretary, is anti-illegal immigration via the channel, which, of course, makes people smugglers millions and millions of pounds and costs many young, innocent people their lives. I, I, I find this talk about the, the immigrant background of the players, I find all that discussion really quite off-putting, actually. And I say this as someone, I'm a first-generation Briton. My parents are immigrants. Uh, my parents are from Ireland. They, they immigrated to this country in, in, the, in 1970. So I'm, I'm a newcomer to this country, and I'm a, more of a newcomer to this country than some of the players for England, in fact. But I find this discussion of their immigrant background and their racial background really problematic actually because what it's doing it, it is racializing these players so it's saying that you should watch england and instead of seeing england you should see the fact that sterling for example comes from jamaica um, harry kane and harry Maguire have irish origins uh, saka has african origins it it encourages encourages us to see them as foreign to see them as not really english and th and that really shows the kind of racial component of woke politics which is co it's constantly encouraging us to think in a racial way I think the vast majority of ordinary people in this country, they watch those players and they see English players. They see players fighting heart and soul to score a goal for this country and to make this country proud. So the, the way in which those kind of divi divisive woke warriors come in and say, listen, you have to think about their racial background. You have to think about their national background. That is a really destructive trend. And I, I think someone like Priti Patel, for example, who is uh, like me, she's a first generation Briton. Her parents were immigrants to this country. The fact that she's cheering in England and wearing the England top is very positive. It shows that there is a great trend of integration in this country where immigrants really want to integrate and be part of the national fabric. So the criticism of her, I, I think, has been really obnoxious. So once again, during this tournament, we have seen just how divisive woke politics can be and how racist woke politics can be as well. Uh, you're completely right, Brendan. Now, look, I've got I've got my panel with me representing Italy tonight is the celebrity chef, Aldo Zilli. He's absolutely delighted. And representing England, our GB News head of digital, Becca Hudson. Becca, I imagine you'll, you probably want to pick Brendan O'Neill up on a couple of his points. Uh, 
maybe just a few. I mean, what I don't understand is why football can't be both this kind of boisterous, fun pastime that, that people use as a way to let us steam, but can't also be a really great public forum to champion social justice and, and, and raise kind of issues of social equality. I, I, I don't see why it has to be kind of a two constituent game and why it can't, can't do both. And I think it quite successfully does do both, doesn't it? I, I think the issue is, what is the social justice that is being pushed? I mean, if it was simple anti-racism, I'm, I'm, all of us are anti-racist, right? The vast majority of people are anti-racist. We detest racism. It's a regressive, backward ideology. But racism has been kicked out of football for a pretty long time, and it wasn't done by do-gooders and, and experts and, uh, and the political elite. It was largely done by fans. It was done by fans who would tut-tut at someone who said something racist or would put pressure on people who said something racist. And through that process, through that process of fans raising awareness among themselves about the problem of racism and starting to cheer black players because they recognised the extraordinary value that they gave to this country. It was that process that led to the expulsion of racism for the most part, of course, there are still racists, but it led to the expulsion of racism for the most part from football. What I think we have with the contemporary so-called social justice warriors is the reintroduction of racial thinking into football. So I'm now supposed to watch the England team and think about the fact that Saka comes from, has Nigerian origins, for example, or that Raheem Sterling was born in Jamaica, or that some of the others are Irish, as I am. I don't want to think about those things. I don't want to think about their racial origins. I don't care about their racial origins. As uh, Dan quoted me earlier on, if you're English, you're English. And that is really totally. all that matters. And the great totally. thing about England is the way it unifies people and brings us together under a national project. And I think the woke warrior is kind of great against that. But I know. Well, someone, someone made a point to me earlier saying, why are you supporting England? It's like, I'm a British citizen. And, and where does it matter where I was born if I live in this country and I'm proud of this country and I love this country, Becca? But yeah. wasn't that the point that Sadiq Khan was making in the tweet that I know um, has, has, has been so um, egregious this evening? You know, he's saying that, you know, England now is people who have parents and grandparents from Jamaica, Nigeria, Ireland. That is what makes this country so great, is that it's not just about kind of Anglo-Saxon um, heritage. It's about, well, we have we, people have made this country their home from all over the world and he's simply celebrating the contribution that those communities um, make make to our public well, what, life. What do, you, what do you think, Aldo? Because obviously you've been here 45 years, but you still support the Italian team. I know you probably support England if, if Italy isn't playing, but what do you make of it, Aldo? Well, if Italy wasn't involved tonight, I would have been British. Yeah. But um, I think that... Uh, Andrew was saying about the uh, fans uh, booing the national anthems. I don't agree with that at all. I think that's really uh, poor. Um, I think that that's a minority anyway. I think the people that go and watch football, um, they, they, it's, there's a lot of... Um, the other night, for example, I was in the Italy-Spain uh, game. I was at Wembley. I came out of the stadium at, um, well, after the game, and uh, it was a, a very friendly affair. No alcohol consumed, of very small amounts, and people were talking, and uh, we were talking about football, uh, people were talking to me, and I was talking back, and the Spaniards were there, and it was a very friendly affair. I mean, it does annoy me, the fact that when I go and watch uh, England sometimes, uh, it, it, you know, it's a different atmosphere. It's, well, it's tribal. Alcohol comes it's into tribal, it. isn't it, Brendan O'Neill? Final word to you. How do you respond to, Al to, to Aldo on that point? But, you know, football is a, is a tribal sport, and I don't particularly have a problem with that. And, and it's not just uh, national tensions. There are also club tensions. If you look at Celtic versus Rangers, for example, or uh, Liverpool versus Everton, or whatever else it might be, there are, there are always tensions in football. I think they are primarily 
pantomime. This is a way of whipping up tension for the fun of that 90 minutes in which you're cheering your side and booing the other side. I don't think it's a destructive social force at all. And that's demonstrated by the fact that fans will often cheer people from different backgrounds, different countries. They don't care about those issues. And the thing that worries me about the, the woke invasion of football it is, is that it's actually encouraging us to think about people's racial and national backgrounds just at a time when we started to think that those things aren't important. So that's a backward step. Exactly. That we're all English. Brilliant point to end it on. Brendan O'Neill, thank you for putting the Euros defeat into a fascinating political context.